Okay. Looks like we are live. All right. Well, how's it going, everyone? Welcome. My name is Shalom, and I will be your host this evening. And uh, give me one second. Sorry, it took, it took a second to try and figure that whole thing out, but it's all good. So, yeah, how's it going? Welcome. And this is Wakanda Wednesday webinar, the first of hopefully many. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking a bit um, about business and multicultural millennials. And, um, you know, to start off, I'm going to give you guys quite a bit of background on myself and kind of what inspired this and uh, a little bit of who I am. That way, give you a little bit more context and help you understand the reason for this. So, like I said, my name is Shalom, and yes, that is my real name. Um, I am born and raised in northern Nigeria, and um, I specifically say that I've been getting some uh, crap about specifically identifying with northern Nigeria, but. Um, I'll tell you why I do that as well. Um, so, yes, I am born and raised in northern Nigeria. Um, I say northern Nigeria specifically because northern Nigeria and southern Nigeria are pretty different in, in terms of our culture, in terms of um, business, in terms of several things. And there's a history to that. And I think, you know, um, teaching you guys or educating you a little bit about the history will also give you a better understanding of African dynamics and um, also business opportunities out there. So I'll explain that as we go on, but to, to make it short and simple, I am born and raised in Nigeria and I moved to the United States as a, um, as a teenager. I was about 14 or so when I moved to the States and so um, I already had quite an upbringing in Nigeria, and then to move to the States, it was quite an adjustment. And uh, so I'll share quite a bit of that and help you understand and relate to why and how it relates to business. So, um, yeah, welcome to, you know, whoever's on here. Let's see, I see a couple people, and thank you guys for joining me. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and start with quite a bit of intro, like I said, about myself, and then I'll touch on a few points in terms of what I'll be discussing business-wise. And really the goal of this specific webinar is to, one, introduce myself, give you an understanding of my background, um, and then discussing business and multicultural millennials, um, you know, multicultural millennials are, are specifically I'm passionate about that demographic because one, I am one, and I've spent quite a bit of time with multicultural millennials um, here in the States. And so I, I've developed a real passion for black people in America because being born and raised in Nigeria and then moving here, um, I've, I've come to develop a lot of empathy for what black people go through here in the States. Um, and, you know, comparing that to my upbringing, I, I definitely see points where maybe me sharing quite a bit could help people in identifying better and help people understand uh, a much bigger and global perspective on business. So while I'm talking, please feel free to leave any comments in the chat ask any questions. Um, once I get done with some of these points, I'll open it up for any questions that you guys have. And then, you know, then we'll move forward. And hopefully the next Wakanda Wednesday, we'll just build on what we touch on today. So again, I am Shalom. I am going to be your host tonight and uh, for, for several more to come. And, uh, you know, um, I'll start with you know, a bit of my upbringing. 
Um, like I said, I grew up in Northern Nigeria and Northern Nigeria is, is very unique in the sense that it's a lot more dry in comparison to Southern Nigeria. Southern Nigeria is, seems to be the, not seems to be, it is the most popular um, area. When, when people talk about Nigeria, they're typically talking about Southern Nigeria because that's where most Nigerians you meet are probably from the South, uh, Igbos or Yorubas. And um, the areas you visit in Nigeria, Lagos, those are those are southern Nigeria, and and they they do represent as well. They're very beautiful, tropical, business friendly um, areas. The north was a little different in in terms of growing up for me. The north, uh, quite a business hub. You know, we we deal in a lot of agriculture, and it, it's quite the business hub. However, it's a lot drier. Um, and the North is very much more Muslim than, than the South. And so culturally though, it has its own, you know, effects in terms of that, you know, religion has a huge part to play in the community. So again, we'll touch on business, my business background, um, why I talk a lot about growing up in Nigeria is because that is where business started for me. So growing up in Nigeria. Um, it, it was just all business, you know, from the point you can walk, you're probably going to be trading or selling something. So from a very early age, I was taught to sell. I learned how to farm. My family is a farming family. At least one side of my family is into farming quite a bit. And so we would large, uh, I mean, we would farm large plots of land, harvest them. And that's what we would sell in market. So you learn how to sell real quick. Market days are some of the best and biggest days where you go, you meet a lot of people and you sell whatever it is that your family farms. Okay. Um, for me, <clears throat> I loved, I love trade from a very early age. I was just a natural. I was always into buying and selling, you know, um, people knew me for that. And so I quickly developed a reputation for being a business person a business salesperson. Um, I enjoy the bartering. I enjoy the transactions. I enjoy relating with people, talking to people, et cetera. So business-wise, that's kind of where my background started. It started with that. And as I grew into my teens, I was still definitely hustling and selling things left and right in Nigeria. I went to a boarding school. And uh, while I was there, I was definitely known as the person to, you know, buy and sell whatever you needed. So the business thing was pretty ingrained within, into me very early. And so coming to the United States, um, I'll transition into that. I moved to the United States as a teenager, came here. Uh, my family was already here. And it was quite an adjustment, I must say. It was quite an adjustment. Um, uh, uh, I, I kind of left a lot of the business side of things. It, it was more about trying to adapt and adjust into the the new society and community I'm in. And so, you know, um, it wasn't till maybe my college years where I started, you know, delving back into business and, and, and doing that sort of thing. And so I'll fast forward my business experience over the last few years. Um, I've... First and foremost, right now, uh, I do have an international marketing and distribution company. So right after college, I started a distribution company where I would get distribution agreements, um, exclusive distribution agreements for fashion companies and apparel companies here in Los Angeles. And I would be their exclusive distributor and marketer on the African continent. So that essentially just means buying apparel in bulk and selling on the African continent. And so I started with a company called Five Four Clothing. Now they're called Menlo Club, very popular men's contemporary wear brand. Um, I, I definitely was instrumental in their marketing and their growth to this point. And then, you know, I, I started doing distribution. It didn't really work out well for me very early on. Um, apparel wasn't something that stores out there wanted to buy at the price points that uh, I was selling them. So that was i took a huge loss on that you know and that was really early i was 21 22 
when I started that distribution and marketing uh, process. And so through those failures, I, I learned quite a bit. After that, um, I took a stab at flipping real estate, which I was very good at and, and, and fairly successful at. And you know that market kind of dried up. And so I decided to focus back on marketing and distribution. And instead of going back into apparel, I started searching for other products that I would sell. And so um, I figured I would just stick to what I grew up knowing. And so I literally just went back to the agricultural side of things. So I take the products that we farm in my villages in Northern Nigeria, and I found different buyers around the world, um, from the grains to cashews to dried hibiscus flowers. So now we sell those to different countries, my biggest market being Latin America. Um, so on the business side, that's sort of my background and the things that I do, I, I tend to focus at least now on the, on the, on the things I know, right? And I guess that's the first thing we'll touch on here is in business, first piece of advice I'll give is, you know, figuring out what it is that you know exceptionally well what it is that you're great at and honing that, you know, becoming a master at that. For me, I went through a really dark period of time where I was trying to search for who I was and I, I felt like I lost who I was. Um, and just a search for identity. And I see that happening a lot in the multicultural millennial space. That's why this is really focused on business and multicultural millennials, because in my observations, um, it appears that, you know, uh, especially in black America, millennials, multicultural millennials, black and Latin are really in search and in need of some identity. So I'll, I'll right here tell you the five things that pretty much all the Wakanda Wednesdays and talks I'm gonna do are gonna be focused on. There's five things that I believe changed my life and five things that I believe will probably help you or anybody else. These five questions were questions that uh, I discovered through a mentor and they made sense. And those five questions really changed everything for me. The number one question was, who am I, right? Um, who am I really digging back to, okay, who is Shalom? <laughs> then the next question is, where am I from? You know, um, the third question is, where am I going? Fourth is, what can I do? And the fifth was, why am I here? These five questions, I'll cover them in no specific order, but I do believe that these five questions will change your life. I truly and sincerely believe that, and I and I hope they do. And um, I'll, I'll go down through each one of them and then explain or try to explain each one briefly um, and what they mean, why they're so important. And there's one particular one that I feel uh, most multicultural millennials will appreciate and one that I'd like to focus on with, with you, okay? So the first one is who am I? You know, um, be, being Nigerian, we're very pr proud people. And most people will tell you that, you know, we're very proud people. We are proud of where we come from, we're proud of our identity. Um, you know, growing up where I grew up from, your name is everything. Your family name is is absolutely everything. It's the core of how people identify you. It, it opens doors for you. It It's everything. It's how we do business. You know, your, your family name carries a lot. The legacy of your family and the background you have carries a lot. So understanding who you are is extremely important. Who am I? I'm, I'm Shalom Bako Nangombe because I, I'm from Gombe State and Gombe Emirates. That's an ancient African kingdom that um, 
I know I'm from and my people are from. So I identify who I am that way, you know, by my name and and the the that whole thing. And where am I, I mean, that ties into where I'm from. So I've already told you I'm from Northern Nigeria, specifically from Gombe State, which is an ancient African emirate um, where, you know, for, for centuries and years and years, you know, uh, I, I hold my family lineage from that. So understanding who I am, where I'm from, I do know those things and, you know, what can I do? Well, that's very relative because what I can do, you probably can do something different, right? And that's where in your process of searching and identifying who you are and where you're from, you can only answer, you know, what you can do, you know, in terms of your skills, your talents, your gifts, those things are, 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 are important. And with my organization, Dreams and Ambition, I talk about passion, purpose, and persistence a, a lot in combination with identifying these five questions or answering these five questions, passion, purpose, persistence, and patience are, are key pillars to everything I preach and everything I talk about and to what I believe has helped me in my journey, okay? Um, so what can you do? For me, when I moved to the States, um, soccer was always a, you know, growing up in most African countries, specifically in Nigeria, soccer is is a way of life. You know, um, you don't just play soccer, you live it. And so I always had that gift and I used that when I came to the States, I used it to get a scholarship. Um, I did play professionally. I played with the Los Angeles Galaxy. I started out a Chicago Fire. These are all major league soccer teams. Chicago Fire picked me up um, through an open tryout, which I went to. Um, I tried out, I got an offer there, got transferred to Los Angeles, played with the Los Angeles Galaxy for a couple of seasons, uh, primarily as a reserve. And I also had the opportunity to train with Seattle Sounders. And I've also played with other small teams around. Those opened a lot of doors for me along the way in my business journey. So I'll, you know, along the way, you'll probably hear me talk more about those. But back to what I can do, I knew I could do that. You know, um, over the years, I've picked up certain skills and certain traits. You know, what you can do is solely up to you. You can choose to build skills, you know, skills that you don't have. I never was a web developer. You know, I, I picked those skills up and those traits because I thought there was opportunity in that. I always knew I was great at marketing and distribution, um, but the digital side picked up fairly quickly over the last few years. And so I decided to hone those skills. Okay. Every website of mine, I, I built myself. You know, I, I've built websites for years now and I still do for the fun of it, but I also build mine. And that allows me a lot of flexibility because I can change things very quickly, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, what can I do? What can you do? Okay. Identify your skills, your talents. Where am I going is next. What's, what's your vision? You know, what's your vision in life? Like, what does the end look like? You know, I make this comment, start with the end in mind. That was also something that I picked up that was very valuable to me. And so I would encourage you to, to think about that. You know, where am I going really has to do with what's your vision? Everyone has a different vision. My vision is definitely very different from yours. That also has a huge part to do with who I am, where I'm from and what I can do. You know, so where are you going? What's what's your vision for your life? You know, identify that and start working towards it, right? So where am I going and why am I here? That has to do with, with purpose. You know, um, purpose is such a, a, a key thing and key component. Uh, I mean, it's a huge part of why I'm even doing this video, right? I do believe part of my purpose in life is to, is to help people and specifically a group of people that um, I feel a lot of empathy for, I feel connected to, and you know, hence why I'm here, right? I'm not getting paid for this. You're not paying me for this. I'm not selling you anything. Uh, this just has to do with real, 
empathy and real passion for a community that I've been a part of and would like to help, you know? And I realized helping doesn't have necessarily have to do with me giving you anything other than maybe just sharing my background, my story, some of the things that I've learned along the way. And hopefully that's helpful and helpful enough, you know? Um, so why am I here? Purpose. Identifying your purpose is, uh, it's, it's a, in my opinion, it could be a very spiritual journey. Um, it certainly has been for me. And identifying my purpose in life also led me to these five questions, which I believe are the core component of, you know, why I do what I do. You know, uh, identifying who I was, you know, uh, for a long time, you know, being an immigrant is a huge part of my story. I can't separate being an immigrant from me being a businessman or any, it's all part of my story. This is just my journey, right? Yours, yours is different. So I lost who I was when I moved to the States. You know, every moving is a, moving to a new country can be very traumatic, right? For a lot of people. Now, given the type of personality I have, it wasn't as bad. I can adjust pretty quickly because learning those traits of selling very early on in Northern Nigeria kind of allowed me to be personable, allowed me to adjust the situations. And that's just the nature of the environment I grew up in. You kind of have to learn how to adapt pretty fast. So moving to the States, I adapted quickly. You know, I'm a dark skinned black man moving to Orange County, California. Now, Nobody gave me a history lesson on the history of Black people in America. I didn't know that. I, I, I have my own history that I grew up with. Um, I had to learn about Martin Luther King. I had to learn about Malcolm X. I, have, I had to put intention into learning about Black America and Black history in America. And being a Black person in America, once you land, nobody's asking you Oh, you look different. You look like you came from, not really, you know, maybe in the way we, I talked and the way I was dressed, but generally speaking, I still got treated the exact same way as most Americans, uh, black Americans specifically get treated. And so I had to adjust quickly because I was also being made fun of at school. And so our clothing is different, you know, the accent, most people will say now, you know, you don't have an African accent. Well, I, I had to adapt very quickly, you know, but I speak several languages. I still speak my native, uh, my native tongue in, in Nigeria. I speak Hausa, Tangale, and a little bit of Spanish. So um, I just had to adapt. And I, I lost my identity because I was trying to adapt and assimilate into a new environment. So. I had to take time after my huge loss and failure in business um, when I first started doing international distribution, I went into a hole, I went into a dark place and I had to really dig deep to say, okay, Shalom, who are you? You know, I mean, you know, on one hand, you're, you're living in America and you're, you're a black American. Most people see you as an African American, but that's just not who I am right um it's just not who i am so i had to go back to say okay this is who i am right identifying that um what what i can do i already knew my skill set i already knew what i could do athletically i've already been successful with that um, i knew i had other traits more than just being an athlete you know we'll we'll touch on that another day but you know um where i'm from being an athlete wasn't the goal for me growing up. Those, those weren't my heroes. Those weren't the people I looked up to. You know, um, I always grew up knowing that I wanted to be a businessman. You know, that's what I saw. My grandparents were great businessmen, great leaders um, in, in both their respective communities and their emirates and their kingdoms. So I grew up with those people as heroes. And so I had to search and say, okay, this is who I am. This is what I can do. Now, the important one that I really do want to talk about and target to multicultural millennials is, you know, um, 
specifically black millennials is, you know, where am I from? That's a, that's a key component that I've observed within almost every circle of um, friends or relationships or associates that I have. It, where, I, where am I from? That is a deep question that a lot of people, you can see the pain and you can see the anger in black America in just that one question, because that is a core part of identifying your purpose and your your journey. It's a, it's a huge part of it. And I am extremely grateful and gracious both to my Black American friends, and I'm very grateful to my family and my upbringing to, to know where, where I'm from, not just over the last 50 years, but for hundreds and hundreds of years. And that key part is one that I now enjoy sharing and proudfully share to not, not to, yeah, I'm pr very proud of where I'm from, but not to, uh, what's the right word? Not to, not to necessarily boast or throw it in your face. It's, it's more to show the power of understanding where you're from right now i there are several tools out there to help you identify some of your dna testing which by the way there are a lot out there but i would highly recommend for for black millennials and even latin millennials probably try african ancestry because they give you something much deeper in the sense that they they at least try to give you an understanding of what tribe you come from, right? And so that's that's a good that's a good thing in my opinion. I if I were to use it, I, that's what I would recommend, and that's what I would use. But where am I from? You know, um, that single question has, you know, has been again a key component of me identifying who I am and, and identifying my purpose in life. Okay, and so. I do have or have developed this passion to help other black millennials and Latin millennials who are in search of that to, to help as much as I can. Not that I can take you here and there, but I understand the value of it. And I understand that if I can help you at least a little bit, identify even with it, just a tribe, that will do a lot for you. That will change your life. It really will. That'll give you a deep sense of purpose like never before. You know, you can answer a lot of questions on this list out of these five questions. The where am I from seems to be one of the biggest ones that, again, that I've observed most millennials struggle with, uh, specifically black millennials in America. And so where am I from? Like I said, you know, I'm from Gombe State in northern Nigeria. All right. Um, where I'm from has also helped me identify the the products that I distribute today, okay? Um, because now I, I distribute the local products and help my kingdom sell all the products that are that, that are farmed, all the produce, all the agro, everything that's farmed, all the resources that we do have. Part of my job is to bring that to the front and sell it to any other part of the world, okay? Um, so that's how important where I'm from is to me. Um, so yeah, and, and understanding where you're from really helps you map out and shape where you're going, you know? So to answer that question of where am I going? What's your vision? Well, a huge part of my vision has to do with helping my communities and helping the communities where I'm from, you know? And so that's, that's important to understand where you're from. Here in the States, it's, it's, I understand it's, it's a very touchy and, and hard question for most Black Americans because of the history of, of slavery and 
you know, I like I said, I, I see the pain, I see the hurt, I see the the anger, and rightfully so, you know, rightfully so. And I hope by just sharing like this on Wakanda Wednesday, maybe sharing a little bit of my background or what I do, you know, I, I just hope that this will inspire or help somebody else that sees this to understand the value of searching for their identity and mapping out their vision, okay? And so I just really hope it, it reaches the right person, whoever you are, all right? Um, so yeah, understand where you're going, that vision, um, really helps clear a lot of clutter, right? And I think that not knowing where you're from has affected quite a bit in the story of Black America because a lot of people are lost. And are they to blame? I mean, when you don't know where you're from, it, it makes it really difficult to understand where you're going. And so if you don't know where you're going, then anything that comes up is is fair game. You know, you, you just you're just out there. All right. Um, again, what you can do is really up to you. That's where you put in the work and you identify your own skills or develop new ones and, and hustle that, you know. Um, and, you know, why am I here? That's another extremely important question that uh, you have to search for yourself in understanding your purpose in this life. And um, I truly hope, like I said, this is this is why I'm doing it. I truly hope and desire for you that you find your purpose in life because it makes this world a much better place. I do believe this is part of my purpose. Part of my purpose is to help any way I can, as little as I can, by just sharing a little bit um, and hoping that that inspires to trigger your journey, you know, into this. So um, those are the five questions, you know, that uh, I swear by, I live by, you know, who am I? Where am I from? What can I do? Where am I going? Why am I here? You know, um, those help in business and they help in life. So on the business side, um, I will say that, you know, uh, like I said, I've, I've been in marketing and distribution for, you know, over 10 years now um, in, in, in multiple industry. I started in the apparel industry, went into real estate. And in real estate, it was a little, it was a little different there. You know, I did quite a bit of flipping. Um, one of the flipping market was here, but it's more of. It's funny because it's incredible how much marketing you actually do in the real estate business. You you are a self marketer, so that was an important skill and trait that I translated into the the marketing side of things or the real estate industry, and um, it helped me find properties to flip. I was really more of a quant. So, you know, finding the property requires quite a bit of marketing, you know, um, and then doing the numbers are the things you kind of learn by experience. Doing the numbers in terms of how much you buy it for, how much you rehab, how much you flip it for, et cetera, et cetera. But my marketing background really helped me tremendously in the apparel industry and, you know, in the commodities market, which is really what. I would call it trading internationally between countries. I trade agricultural products, products that we farm, you know, from Nigeria and trade it with other countries around the world. So business-wise, part of why I specifically try to share with multicultural millennials is to help broaden your perspective. And again, this ties back to understanding kind of where you're from, because understanding where you're from will help you identify other opportunities. You know, there are opportunities beyond just the United States. I understand the struggle of being black in America. That's why I'm talking today. 
Okay, I understand the struggle. I've lived here for some time and I got lost in the sauce. The sauce of being treated just like any other black American, uh, under, lost in the sauce of anger, of pain, of knowing that there is this system against you, yet most people can't relate. And you just keep acting and reacting in anger to this world and asking for justice to a world that just won't give it to you. And, and out of that anger, I, I decided to take all that anger and all that pain and focus it into business globally. I mean, we're on YouTube right now. We're on Instagram and all this stuff. These are global. There are global opportunities. Most people look to China and Asia most of the time for manufacturing and all these business opportunities. Yet you have an entire continent called the African continent where you'll feel a better sense of identity. You'll feel a better sense of home, a better sense of purpose, okay? A bigger drive and passion to do whatever it is that you're good at. What can I do? Identifying whatever you can do and looking at that as a business and taking that globally can help tremendously. Okay, so for me, opening up your your your, your mental intelligence to know that there's a world beyond just here in the states. And you know, I, I like I said, I've lived the Black American life. Okay, I understand the pain. I understand the struggle. I understand the system, and I just decided to use my pain to focus on business and building business. You know, I've I've failed a lot. <laughs> Listen, I've failed a whole lot, but is it worth it? Absolutely, because there's no way you're not going to fail. First of all, you have to fail. You you just have to, because <laughs> if not, I don't. There's nobody that hasn't. It's just that that's the bottom line. If you want to succeed, you have to, you will fail. Okay. So failing is a part of the process. And I failed for years and years and years. Like I said, I started 21, 22. And so I've had a journey where I failed, 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 failed over and over again. Yet I've also had successes and wins. Okay. I, I have a marketing company that is focused on multicultural millennials. Okay. And we're in a digital age. I don't, it's, it's digital and experiential marketing. Some, some people that are watching this maybe have been to some of my events, but I work with, I work with a lot of brands now, you know, different brands who seek to target multicultural millennials like yourself or anyone else. And for me, I, I saw, I, I have seen for years the pain and the, the community that has bubbled and grown out of this pain and out of this anger and out of this need for change. And so I decided to start focusing more on that community because it's not just Black people in America. It's not just multicultural millennials in America. I've seen it in Latin America. I've seen it on the African continent, in Nigeria, in Ghana. So it's global. So you have these global group of millennials across African diasporas and Latin diasporas who are yearning for identity, who are yearning for you know, um, an understanding of global business opportunities, right? And I'm telling you, it's there. It's real. I've seen it everywhere, right? And that's what I decided to, to, to focus on with, with, with my marketing company called DNA Creative Labs. And so with that, along with distribution, marketing and distribution go hand in the hand, you know? And, and that'll, that, that leads me to talk about this. 
beyond just physical commodities, because yes, I do talk about agricultural commodities and those are real and tangible products that you know you farm, you harvest, you dry, or you, you manufacture into whatever and you distribute it in containers or airplane ships, whatever across the world or in different. However, digital commodities to me are some of Africa's largest exports. Look at our movies, look at our music. Nollywood is pound for pound competitive with Hollywood every year. Okay, the music and entertainment industry. You got to look at things differently. You, it's a global world. You can distribute globally. You can source globally. Okay, and I look at distribution and marketing globally. That's how I've chosen to look at it because I understand where I'm from. And yes, having that background allowed me to understand life in the world in a much global perspective much earlier than than maybe some other people. But hopefully this is opening your mindset as well and opening your 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 head to the ideas of this is for me digital real commodities are what I distribute. So you have this digital commodities. I, I publish all my own stuff. We we curate our own events, okay? We curate our own media and we publish it globally. All right. So you have digital commodities. What are digital commodities? Well, you know, most people will start talking about Bitcoin. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. Okay. Yes, those are digital commodities, but I'm talking about media assets. What do you think music is? What do you think film is? These are commodities. People want them, right? People buy them, people pay for them. These are digital commodities. And, and they can be moved much easier than real commodities. Okay? So you have digital commodities. You can create your own. All right? Those are digital. Real commodities, those are tangible. All right? I, I choose to focus on that because it helps my community. It helps employ thousands of people. Okay? It, it helps my local economy in my local African kingdom in my local emirate in Northern Nigeria. So my purpose has to do with more than just me. It also has to do with the people that I grew up with, the people that I look up to, my local family, friends, community. At the end of the day, it's, it's about my small African kingdom that I want to help and make sure we have access to basic things, electricity, water, food, shelter, you know, those things. And so anyways, that's quite a bit of business and, uh, you know, quite a bit of what I do business wise. And, you know, as I mentioned, reason I share and want to share is to hopefully inspire you to seek the questions to these five questions for yourself, because I know that it will help push you towards, you know, identifying your purpose. Um, I feel like I, I'm still on my journey. Okay. I'm not here saying, oh, I've, I've, there is no really like quote unquote mountaintop for me to reach. Like it's a lifelong journey that I will continue doing for the rest of my life. However, everybody has a journey. And I, I, I identified through my business and what I do, I started seeing patterns amongst the diasporas, both Latin, Latin and African diasporas across the world. On the African continent, like I said, in Ghana and Nigeria, um, in Latin America, in Mexico specifically, you know, where I am, and uh, quite a bit, and here in the States where I've seen it in my community amongst black millennials. And so that was the inspiration to, to start these Wakanda Wednesday webinars. Some of you have been to the event, the Wakanda Wednesday event, um, the, the BET weekend events that, that I do. You know, these are all put together by DNA Creative Labs, our marketing company. And through that process, we 
really took a lot of data and took a lot of these conversations that we were having. And I was like, man, there, there seems to be a need for this. Maybe I need to share a little bit more and people can understand the reason for one, why I do what I do, why I'm in these kind of businesses and to hopefully help you, you know? Um, be, because you can make money a million ways. You can make money several different ways, right? I do this because I it's a passion and it's it's I feel it's my purpose. That's why I do it. I enjoy it. I love it. You know, but there is no point doing it if I'm not if I'm not trying to help somebody. There really isn't. Like so this is part of the process. Gosh, I apologize. This is part of the process and you know, um, again, I hope it has been valuable, insightful, and maybe inspires you to do something. I don't know what, but, you know, I hope that was helpful. So if you have any questions, again, my name is Shalom. You can find me on social media. You can get all the info below this mes this video um, and all that. Dreamsandambition.org is my website. That's dreams, the letter N, ambition.org. You can find out quite a bit about what I do and um, you know the inspiration behind all of this and part of my story and all the contact info you need. But feel free to reach out, ask me questions. Um, I'd love to interact with more people and really, um, you know, build a community around this. You know, that's that's part of the inspiration is around the 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 some of the events we do is to bring value to the community of multicultural, both Black, Latin, and whoever else, millennials that find value in what it is that you know um, I do, and so that that that's really um a huge reason for this so again i hope it was helpful or insightful or anything else i appreciate you taking the time to to watch this and again if you have any questions shoot me a message in the chat or you know if we don't have any then we'll sign off and you know again you can reach me on dreamsandambition.org and I'd be happy to give you any information that it is that you desire. So that's it for this Wakanda Wednesday. And again, I appreciate you logging on and I will be seeing you again for another episode. That's it.